With the teeth now set, we're ready to move forward with making the denture bases. And so what we want to first do is select the model that we're going to be building the denture on. For this example, I'm going to do the upper denture. So I want to go in the drop down menu and choose the upper tissue model or whatever you've got that labeled. And then click on whichever corresponding jaw you're doing. So here it's a maxilla and the next button we'll hit is create denture. Now this first step is to indicate the path of draw of the denture and you'll see based on this path of draw the dark brown is your undercuts. So we can give this a little bit more of a typical insertion path for a maxillary denture coming from the front of the mouth and kind of going from front to back. And you see by doing that we've minimized how much undercut there is. There's still just a few little areas uh, but not really much to worry about. So try to, to optimize your path of insertion so that you've got the least amount of undercut possible. But with that said, you need to ask the question, do you want the software to block out undercuts or not? Now there's different scenarios where you would do both of those options. For example, if you had to print this as a try indenture and you're going to then conventionally process it, well then that denture base has to go on and off of that physical stone model. Obviously, if you have any undercuts, that's not going to be able to happen. So you would definitely need to block out all the undercuts and you would want to take this all the way down to zero. If on the other hand, you intend to just print this and directly deliver it to the patient, I personally prefer to maintain all of the undercuts unless they're extremely severe. Uh, just a little bit of an undercut, it's, it's tissue, so the tissue will compress and get out of the way and it will actually contribute to the overall fit. And so I would only remove any undercuts clinically in the mouth if I find that the patient is having pain putting the denture on and off. So for my case, I'm going to take this all the way up to the very maximum, which is five, and we're going to allow this to engage all of the undercuts. Let's now create a posterior palatal seal. This is obviously only going to apply to a maxillary denture. Now I want to get this mandibular model out of the way so I can just right click it, toggle visibility, and you'll see that that disappears. So since this model was generated by just scanning an impression, we obviously don't have a posterior palatal seal and we need to incorporate that. So once you hit the palatal seal button, you're going to want to place a dot in each hamular notch. So hold down the shift key and drop a point in this hamular notch and then hold the shift key and go drop another point in the opposite side. And you'll get an initial proposal. You see the, the Cupid's bow shape here. Now you've got sliders that can help you to modify this. And so it's falling off the back of the model here. I actually want to bow that upward towards the anterior. So something more like that. And we'll just play with these other sliders to show you how they modify. This takes the, uh, the slope out of the very middle of that Cupid's bow. This is going to take the depth of the bow up or down. And then finally, you've got how wide do you want to make that bow go. And finally, the thickness. Um, I usually go with the posterior palatal seal that's about a millimeter and a half deep. It wouldn't hurt to go two millimeters. It's easy to reduce. It's not so easy to try and add if you don't do enough, though. So with that done, I want to look at this model from an occlusal view, make sure that I'm happy with the shape, and as soon as I am, I can go ahead and click Next. And in this step, the software is going to create the master model with that Cupid's bow built in, and then we can begin drawing the denture base. So here's the resulting master model, and now we're ready to go ahead and draw the denture base. First of all, make sure that your settings are all correct up here. Offset, that is the amount of spacer between the denture base and the master model. If you're going to directly mill or print this, then you would want to not have any offset because you want the most precise fit possible. If on the other hand, you want to be able to print this and have it go on and off of a physical model and be able to seat completely, then you're going to need to incorporate an offset probably up in the realm of 0.3 millimeters. And you might just print a few of those and play with the number in your printer that you get the best fit with. But I'm going to go with an offset of zero. I'm going to go with the default thickness of three millimeters for the denture base. You can also alter how much material there's going to be right around the neck of the teeth and the overall denture smoothness. Okay, so let's just leave those there for now and I'll come back and I'll, I'll do another version of it where you can see how altering that would change things. So you need to go ahead and draw the perimeter of your denture. So you can do this by holding the shift key on your keyboard and then dropping a left click and then continuing around everywhere that you want to create the border for the denture. So I'm going right at the depth of the vestibule.
and you'll just continue to shift and left click to drop points and then very important when you get back to the center you need to take the last dot and draw it into the first one and as you see that closes the overall contour and now we're ready to proceed with creating the denture base so let's click next and here you see the initial denture base proposal uh, again you've got just a three millimeter thickness of wax or acrylic whatever you want to refer to the gingiva as built down onto the model base. You can see the internal fit here, how the surfaces are very closely stippled together, indicating a very accurate fit. And right now you can still see that there's teeth uh, penetrating through, but we'll deal with that in the next step. Now I do want to go back and show you how you could alter the shape of this. If you look at this base and you think, that you don't want as much uh, anatomy in the overall base, you don't want to replicate the palatal surface, then you can click back and go back to the step to redraw your boundary. So let me redraw this and then apply a different smoothness to it. And remember when you get to the end, grab your last node and draw it into the first. If uh, you look back at this and you feel like you need to alter the boundary any, you can grab any of these nodes and by holding the shift key you can reposition them. If you need to add additional nodes you can hold the shift key and drop additional points in. And so just make sure you're happy with your boundary. And this time the change I'm going to make is I'm going to drag the gingival smoothness all the way up to the maximum and then click next and let's see how that affects the shape of the gingival proposal. Alright, so with this new gingival proposal, you can see that it overall has a lot more smoothness to it because of the smoothing application that we applied in the last step. And now, once you're happy with the overall shape of the base, you're ready to begin doing your gingival festooning. So I'll go through the tools that you have available here one by one. The first is the Add and the Remove tool. You can control the tool size by using this slider or if you hold your shift key down and then use the scroll ball on your mouse you can go up or down using the scroll ball to very quickly change the size of the spot size for your tool. The tool strength can also be altered by using the scroll ball only this time you'll hold down the control button and so you can see as I hold down the control button and use the scroll ball it's changing the tool strength alternatively you can just come over here and grab the slider I usually like to use these tools at full strength and then the spot size just depends on what I'm doing. So let's first go and try to add some gingiva. So let's find an area where we're deficient. I probably want to make this where it's not such an abrupt drop off. So if you hold down the shift key and then change your spot size to whatever is appropriate, then you can now just left click and you can see that I'm expanding and I'm moving around wherever I want to add that material. If you look at it from a bit more lateral view, you can see that continue to build up, okay? Now if you want to use that as a remove tool, then you'll do the exact same thing, only you'll hold down the control button instead of shift. So here, there's a bit too much gingiva on these premolars. I'll hold down the control button. I'm gonna minimize the spot size just a bit and then left click and you can see that that quickly takes away more material. So let's go ahead and add some more gingiva back here just to keep things even. I've created a bit of a wrinkle here in the mesh and I'll show you how to take care of that with the smoothing tool. But that looks pretty symmetric. So the next tool would be your smoothing tool. So if I click on that, you've got the exact same functions. You can increase or decrease the spot size using the shift key and then your, your mouse scroll ball. Same thing with the tool strength. You can go up or down with the control button. And so I'm going to get a fairly large spot size here and maximum strength on the smoothing and I'm going to try to smooth out this wrinkle that I've created. By just left clicking while I'm holding the shift button you can see that this will quickly smooth out any rough areas that you've got. If you wanted to further smooth the area back here by the posterior palatal seal then you can do that and get a really nice area for where their tongue is going to be resting. Some people like to put uh, palatal rugae in the tops of their dentures. Others want that completely smooth. That's just a user preference. It's up to you. Going down the list, we next have the local deform tool. And so this is a great tool if you're trying to make pretty significant changes in a very quick manner. 
because what you can do is using the shift key in your scroll ball you can change the spot size and then holding the shift key left click and you can see what it does is it will grab all of the mesh that's residing underneath this uh, spot size and you can pull it in or out and make very big changes quickly. So right here where the gingiva is kind of caved in a bit I'm going to stretch that out. If I've got any areas where I'd like for the gingiva to come up on the teeth further I could grab those and bring that up quickly. This canine could stand to have a bit more gingiva on the lingual. Same with this one. And then conversely, you can use this to remove material as well. So if I look at the buckle here, we still have too much gingival on these premolars. And I'm just going to bring that back. It looks like there's a bit of a caved in area right here, so I can stretch that out slightly. Now continuing on the, down the list, we've got the show and hide tooth chain. So you can actually at this stage alter the tooth positions if you wanted to. Uh, I could lock this tooth and then hold shift and swing this tooth over. However, I really think you want to try to get all of that done in the previous step and at this stage only be focusing on festooning the gingiva. So I'll undo that by hitting control Z. You could also move the entire tooth chain at this stage. Same comment on that. You'd probably want to do this mostly at the prior stage, but just in case you needed to make a minor change, you can do that here without losing all of your gingival work. And finally, you've got the back button if you need to go back to the previous step. And once you are done, you can click next and go on to the next step, which would be to create the actual denture base and the sockets for those teeth. So I'm going to go back to the smooth tool and just give this denture a once over and make sure that I'm happy with the overall festooning. I'll time lapse this so that you don't have to sit here and watch me make every little change. But you'll get the big picture of how I try to go through the festooning process. I meant to also mention earlier that you don't have to worry about your tools altering the internal surface here. As you see when I look from above here, my tool does not roll over onto the internal surface of the denture. Those are protected areas so that you don't have to worry about that. And you can take your tools all the way to the border and not cause any changes on the internal surface. So I'm done with the festooning. If you want to, you can continue to get this as fancy as you wanted to get it. I know some people like to place a gingival roll. I'll show you the technique that I use for that, although it's not the only way to do it. But I like to use the add and the remove tool. And I typically will get a spot size of about like so. And then just holding down the shift key, I'm going to go in one big motion all the way around the necks of the teeth. and then just repeat over on this side and then usually after I'll create that gingival roll I come back with the smooth tool again and then I just gloss over that to take any rough edges off but again spend as much time as you want here this is definitely the most time consuming part of the, the process if you would want to get a really detailed gingiva me personally, I usually am trying to do uh, a printed denture like this for an economy denture, and thus we're not going to spend tons of time characterizing the gingiva. I really just want to get a nice contour around the necks of the teeth and get it overall pretty smooth. So with that done, I'll click next and we'll pick up in the next video.